Welcome to the God of War Timeline Part 3, Taking the Throne. In Part 2, we witnessed the ghost of Sparta, Kratos, break his oath to Ares and free himself from the bonds of the God of War, ending with him saving the entire world at a horrible cost, forcing him to lose his daughter all over again. Many of the gods were growing concerned with Kratos as he was growing more and more powerful. His anger towards them was noticeably rising. Hades already had a hatred for the mortal since he defeated his champion Ulrich the Barbarian and now took the life of his queen Persephone. But the Olympians still needed his service, and Poseidon, god of the seas, sent Kratos to the Aegean Sea. An enormous serpent called the Hydra was terrorizing his seas, and he commanded Kratos to take care of it, beginning the events of the original God of War. And so the champion of Olympus set out to take down the beast and satisfy the god of the seas. Slaying the creature, Kratos set out to find the key to the captain's quarters so he could take the ship back to shore, having satisfied the mission given to him. Thank you! Thank the gods you came back for me! I didn't come back for you. No! Kratos sailed from port to port following the orders of the gods and trying to drown out his memories, but nothing worked. He found himself taking more orders from Athena. Athena! Ten years, Athena! I have faithfully served the gods for ten years. When will you relieve me of these nightmares? We request one final task of you, Kratos. Your greatest challenge awaits in Athens. Ares had finally lost control and was openly defying Zeus and the rest of the gods, attacking cities with all of his power, dedicated to the other gods. Athena put all her hopes in Kratos to save the city of Athens and its people. She knew Kratos' history with Ares and gave her blessing to the mortal, sending him to find the oracle that could guide him. The god of war had to die. Kratos made his way through Athens as the beast summoned by Ares mercilessly hunted down the populace in search of the Oracle, as he witnessed the destructive power of Ares with his own eyes. And Zeus disguised himself as a gravedigger, giving his son some guidance and leaving him with a warning. A grave? In the middle of a battle? Who will occupy home? You will, my son. Oh, I've got a lot of digging to do indeed. All will be revealed in good time, and when all appears to be lost, Kratos, I will be there to help. After finding the Oracle, she touched Kratos and saw the terrible deeds that he had done. The horrified Oracle was shocked that the gods would send such a monster like the Ghost of Sparta, but fulfilling her duty to Athena, the Oracle guided him to the desert to find the only weapon that could kill a god. 
Pandora's Box, crafted by Hephaestus so long ago. The ancient weapon hidden away in Pandora's temple and strapped to the back of Zeus's father, Kronos. Kratos made his way through the desert, facing off against the sirens that could show him the way to Pandora's temple. The enormous titan passed by Kratos as he finally discovered the whereabouts of Pandora's temple. For three days, he climbed the walls of the mountains and made his way to the entrance of the temple. Kratos knew he had no choice but to succeed or die within the temple and its many tests. So, you think you can conquer the Temple of the Gods, do you? It's never been done, you know. Sooner or later, the Harpies will bring what's left of you back for me to burn. The Gods hid Pandora's box in here, so no mortal would ever claim its power. And yet, year after year, I open the gate for more and more soldiers and place more and more bodies on these pyres. If I were you, I'd leave now. May the gods grant you strength to conquer the perils that lay before you. Good luck, Spartan. Inside, Kratos had to face challenges from the gods to ensure he was worthy of Pandora's box. Traps meant to brutalize and kill any intruders to the temple, with bodies littered everywhere. Challenges from Hades pitting Kratos against his forces and demanding the souls of his slain enemies. Fiery boulders that would crush any normal man attempting to bypass them, and even an enormous minotaur in this labyrinth. After successfully passing every test thrown at him and finding the bodies of the architect and his family that designed this temple, Kratos used their heads as keys to unlock the path to Pandora's box, and for the first time in history, a mortal had reached it. Kratos pushed the box all the way back to the entrance, but getting to Athens would be more difficult than he could have possibly imagined. Ares had felt that the box was found and refused to let Kratos use it on him. So little Spartan. You've recovered Zeus's precious box, but you will not live long enough to see it opened. I will see to that. Goodbye, Spartan. You will rot in the depths of Hades for all eternity. And as the life faded from his body, Kratos found himself falling towards Hades, but the underworld would not stop him from having his revenge. And Kratos fell into the underworld, the river Styx beckoning below, the currents strong enough to carry even the strongest mortal to his eternal resting place. But Kratos had no intention of resting yet. He intended to live, to return to Earth and complete his quest. Let go, fool! You won't drag me down to that cursed river! There is a task left for me above. I will see it completed. You again? Go!
climbing out of Hades, he realized the gravedigger, secretly Zeus aiding him, had opened an entrance for him to come through, promising that if Kratos completed his task, the gods would forgive his sins. Finally, standing face to face with Ares, Kratos used the powers he had gained to free the box from his hands, and revenge was finally in sight. Opening the box released the power of hope that Athena had placed inside of it so long ago when Zeus had originally closed it, and the power of hope absorbed into Kratos, increasing his size to match the god of war. You are still just a mortal. Every bit as weak as the day you begged me to save your life. I am not the same man you found that day. The monster you've created has returned to kill you. You have no idea what a true monster is, Kratos! Your final lesson is at hand! Prepare to join your family, Spartan! Kratos was stronger than Ares had ever imagined, and Ares attempted to take advantage of his emotions to destroy his willpower. But the battle was not over. Kratos! What's happening? Where are we? By the gods, can this be real? Please, take us home! Do you see, God of War? You took them once, but you'll never have them again! You cannot save them, Kratos. You gave them up in your quest for ultimate power. There is a price to pay for everything you gain. Not that price. I didn't want them to die. No price is too high for what I offered! <laughs> You rejected me. A god! Now, you will have no power. No magic! All that is left for you is death! Oh, not... not again. You should have joined me, Kratos! You should have been stronger! By the... Gods. The battle was not over. The gods, it seemed, had a final gift for Kratos. I still have allies in Olympus, Ares. Now you will see how strong I am. Remember, Kratos. It was I who saved you, in your time of greatest need. I haven't forgotten, Ares. I remember how you saved me. That night... I was trying to make you a great warrior. You succeeded. <laughs> The unthinkable had happened. A mortal had killed a god. Ares was no more, and Athena's city of Athens was saved. But Kratos still found no solace. 
After all he had done for the gods, he finally realized they had twisted their words and given him false promises that they never intended to fulfill, losing all hope. Athena, rid me of the memories that haunt me still. You have done well, Kratos. Though we mourn the death of our brother, the gods are indebted to you. We promised your sins would be forgiven, and so they are. But we never promised to take away your nightmares. No man, no god could ever forget the terrible deeds you have done. The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. Now there is no hope. And Kratos cast himself from the highest mountain in all of Greece. After ten years of suffering, ten years of endless nightmares, it would finally come to an end. Death would be his escape from madness. The fate of Kratos was not as it seemed. The gods had other plans. But suddenly, the Spartan found himself elevated high into the air, saved by Athena, and given a chance to become something more. You will not die this day, Kratos. The gods cannot allow one who has performed such service to perish by his own hand. Ares' tactics were brutal. His path of destruction had to be stopped. But now there is an empty throne in Olympus. And a new god of war is needed. Take these stairs, Kratos. They lead to your ultimate reward. With statues representing some of his greatest trophies at his side, Kratos made his way to the throne room of Ares in Mount Olympus and accepted his reward. Athena had grown fond of the mortal that had served the gods for so many years and made him the new God of War. The ultimate revenge against Ares and ending the events of the original God of War. Although Kratos was successful in ending Ares, the other Olympians didn't celebrate his victory nor trust him, and many of the other gods were offended that Athena had decided to make Kratos a god, without the authorization of Zeus. And when Kratos opened Pandora's box, he had also released something more than hope. The evils created during the Titan War that Zeus had locked away so long ago had also escaped, as they slowly infected the gods, along with the remnants of chaos. One of the greatest evils, fear, gripped Zeus as Kratos slaughtered Ares, remembering the prophecy of the marked warrior that would end the gods, and he started becoming paranoid, angered that a mortal could so easily open Pandora's box, and unaware that so much dark energy was still alive and well inside of it. Zeus unleashed his rage on Hephaestus, now knowing that the craftsmen of the gods had lied to him, and beat him within an inch of his life, beat him so viciously that he left him disfigured. Zeus sent him down to Hades and left him trapped in a small cavern to spend the rest of eternity for his betrayal, and he hid Pandora's box within the flames of Olympus as he originally intended, taking Pandora with him and hiding her away in case he ever needed to sacrifice her to reopen the box in the future. And now imbued with the powers of a god, Kratos made his way to Sparta and declared himself the new god of war, as the Spartan army celebrated him and gladly followed his rule. Much like the Kratos of old, he led his Spartans on conquest after conquest and could only distract his mind by being in constant battle, leading to the events of God of War Betrayal. Kratos' conquest across Greece, much like his old enemy Ares, angered the other gods, and the wife of Zeus Hera sent down one of her minions, the 
giant creature Argos to stop the Spartans, but to no avail. As Kratos attacked the monster, a mysterious assassin appeared and finished it off, slaying the creature, leaving the mark of Kratos on his chest, framing him for the monster's death, and angering Hera, Queen of Olympus. The more victories Kratos claimed, the more concerned the gods grew, that he was following the same path of Ares. Kratos chased after the assassin, demanding answers to who's trying to turn the gods against him. But the assassin escaped and Kratos was faced with monsters from Hades. He battled the hordes of Hades, furious that they had killed so many of his men, and tracked down the assassin, running away, as one of the Olympiads stood in his way, warning him to stop his pursuit. Kratos was unable to identify the mystery assassin, but suspected Hades had a hand to play in it. The god standing before him was Cerex, one of the messengers of the gods and son of the Olympian Hermes. Kratos ordered him to get out of the way, but Cerex refused and attacked Kratos with the help of Hades' creatures. But Cerex was no match for Kratos, and the son of Hermes was slain, the second god to fall at the hands of Kratos. And Zeus became even more concerned, ending the events of God of War Betrayal. During his reign as the god of war, many followers of Ares in the mortal world saw Kratos as a fake god, refusing to accept him as the Olympian god of war. These mortals heard the legends of the Ambrosia, the mystical fruit that Kratos had used to save the life of his baby daughter years ago, and they planned to claim it to revive Ares. But Kratos knew where the tree grew the mystical fruit, and set off to the cave where he once found himself with his Spartan army, slaying demons and enormous creatures that stood in his way. And Kratos encountered memories of his past. Once again, Hades interfered with his journey and revived his old crew of Spartans, the same loyal Spartans that Kratos had been forced to leave behind as their corpses attacked him. But he knew these were no longer his men, but creatures from the underworld. Kratos attacked them with no mercy, sending them back to where they came from. And finally, seeing the same tree he had picked the ambrosia from so long ago to save his daughter, he made his way to it, and the island where it was found came to life. The island was actually a living creature, a giant named Gygus, older than the world itself, a creature born of chaos with 50 heads and 100 arms, which were actually the trees burned in the battle Kratos once had here with the champion of Helios. Gygus clawed its way to the surface from the depths of Tartarus to use the ambrosia to cure its grotesque physical appearance, but as it reached the surface, its arms were burned away, and Kratos had taken the ambrosia for his daughter. The monster attacked the new god of war, anxious to have its revenge on him, but Kratos had the power of the Olympians on his side, unleashing the flames of Apollo on the beast, and destroying it along with the tree. The ambrosia was destroyed forever, ensuring that Ares would never be able to return from the dead. And Kratos returned to his throne, watching over his beloved Sparta. After years of godhood, the memories of his life as a mortal suddenly came rushing to his mind. <laughs> Seeing his younger brother and hearing the voice of his mother calling for help, Kratos knew this was not a mere vision, recognizing where his mother was. It looked exactly like the Temple of Poseidon within the city of Atlantis. Desperate for answers to secrets he knew were being hidden from him, Kratos set off to Atlantis with a battalion of Spartans, as Athena tried to convince him otherwise. This is not a wise course of action, Kratos. It was a dream, nothing more. The visions still haunt me, Athena. The visions you promised to take away. But this vision, I can change. Perhaps it is a vision best left unchanged. There is more to this than you know. Please. This begins the events of God of War, Ghost of Sparta. Knowing the destructive prowess of Kratos, Poseidon sent his aquatic creatures to keep Kratos away from the city, but the god of war demanded answers and nothing would stop him.
monstrous Scylla from the deepest pits of the sea pursued Kratos throughout the city as a fierce storm raged on. But Kratos eventually discovered the source of his visions. In a hidden chamber within Atlantis, he discovered a shocking secret, realizing that his mother's voice was no hallucination. His mother Callisto was alive and calling for help near the end of her life. How I have missed you, Kratos. What treachery is this? Another trick of the gods? No, my son. It is me. Your father brought me here. I have waited so long. My father? <coughs> we do not have much time, Kratos. Your brother does not have much time. Demos? He lives trapped in torment. Deep in death domain, you must help him. You must, Kratos. <coughs> he needs you. This cannot be. Why? Why would you do this? Your father forbid me to tell My you. father? Who is my father? Zeus had secretly placed a curse on her. If she ever attempted to utter his name to Kratos, she would turn into a savage beast. Convinced this entire event was a trick of the gods, Kratos attacked the monster. Gods had forced another tragedy on his life, pushing him to the brink of madness. He had slain his own mother, and now knew that his brother was still alive and in incredible torment within Death's Domain. Deimos was the only family he had left, and he had to free him, against the wishes of the gods fearing the prophecy of the Marked One. The Temple of Ares in Sparta held the secret that would guide him to Death's Domain, but Kratos first had to make his way out of Atlantis, as the Scylla continued pursuing him. Inside the bowels of Atlantis, he encountered the Titan Thera, offering her help in return for letting her go. Kratos thrust his blades into the Titan, borrowing her power, and giving her a surge of energy powerful enough to release her from her chains as he once again encountered Poseidon's beasts. release of the Titan and the battle with Scylla shook the very foundations Atlantis was built upon and the kingdom dedicated to Poseidon became unstable, triggering a local volcano and setting the entire city on a path to sink slowly into the depths of the ocean. But that mattered little to Kratos, as his rage towards the gods was greater than ever and he confronted Athena. Athena! You lied to me! 
The gods lied to me! My brother lives. He lives! Athena! Don't let your rage blind you, Kratos. There is much you do not know. Be warned. They will all try to stop you. On his way to the Temple of Ares, Kratos ran into a dying Spartan that gave him a message from Erinus, the daughter of Thanatos, the god of death, tormenting Deimos. The soldier told Kratos that death awaits him, and he was doomed to fail in his quest for the skull. A mysterious skull was the key to open the way into the realm of death, with an entrance found within the city of Atlantis itself, and Erinus had been sent by her father to find the Spartan and stop him from reaching his brother, under the order of Zeus. The daughter of Thanatos eventually found Kratos, but he had no fear towards her, and made it clear that he would save his brother under any circumstances. After defeating Aranus, he finally made his way back home to Sparta as everyone looked upon him in awe. Their god of war was walking among them, and making his way to the old temple of Ares, he found his loyal Spartans tearing down a statue of the old god of war. Pull! You! Move further out! My lord, we shall make quick work of this, and erect a statue befitting of your glory! That's right, man! Kratos, the god of war! All hail Lord Kratos! Kratos explored the temple looking for the skull he needed to unlock the door to the domain of death, but he first had to face the guilt that he felt for letting his brother suffer for all these years. <laughs> Kratos dispatched the vision of his younger self and found the skull of Charis, the key needed to open the domain of death. Thanatos knew that Kratos was on his way, and taunted the warrior, confident that he would never reach Deimos. On his way to death's domain, Kratos encountered a flow of lava, with no obvious way past it, and ran into King Midas, a mortal that was cursed to turn everything he touched into gold. The old king had completely lost his mind, and Kratos needed a way to get past the fiery chamber throwing Midas into the fire, causing the entire lava flow to become gold, continuing his journey. Eventually, Kratos made his way deeper into the sinking Atlantis, receiving more warnings from the gods. 
You have desecrated my kingdom! I shall not forget this, ghost of Sparta! You will answer for this affront! It is not too late to turn back, Kratos. No good will come of this journey. The gods... I am done with the gods! Return to Olympus and leave me be. Your brother was a threat to Olympus, Kratos. What was done had to be done. Forgive me. keep him away from Deimos, especially with the entrance being so close. And finally finding the entrance to the Domain of Death, Kratos used the skull on the door and entered the Dark Netherworld, the purgatory nestled between the land of the living and the realm of the dead. And for the first time since he was a boy, he laid eyes on his brother. Deimos was still alive, and Kratos rushed to save him, freeing him from his bonds. But he didn't find the same brother he once knew. Brother, you are safe now. <laughs> you let this happen to me. You were supposed to protect me. Did you think I would forget? Did you think I would forgive? I will never forgive you, brother. Get up! Fight me! I hate you, Kratos! Deimos had been driven mad with anger towards Kratos. Kratos received a beating from his brother, but refused to strike back at him. And at that moment, Thanatos appeared, furious that Kratos had killed his daughter, promising that the Spartan would suffer, taking Deimos with him. Kratos was badly wounded from the confrontation with Deimos, but the determined warrior promised to take his brother away from the grasp of Thanatos. Thanatos!
Thanatos now believed that Zeus took the wrong brother when he responded to the prophecy, determining that Kratos was actually the marked warrior to be feared. The two brothers stood side by side and stood against the primordial, shocked that these Spartans were as skilled as they were in combat. Thanatos, the god of death and ruler of the domain of death, was no more. Rushing over to check on his wounded brother, Kratos discovered that he had succumbed to his wounds and lost his life, the sibling he had loved so dearly taken from him due to the actions of the gods, like everyone else in his life that he loved. Kratos buried Deimos with the help of the Gravedigger, secretly a satisfied Zeus, relieved that the supposed marked warrior was dead, and Kratos was forced to live with the fact that everyone he became close to suffered a horrible death. You are free now. Let go of that which made you mortal. Your ties to this world are severed. You are ready to be a god. Is this all a game to you, Athena? It is 
not over. The gods will pay for this. Forgive me, brother. Kratos returned to Olympus to plan his next actions, and Zeus brought the body of Callisto to bury next to her son, stating that only Kratos remained to be taken care of. Zeus knew that Kratos was furious with their actions, and it was time for him to take direct action against his son. Now, only one remains. Join me next time for the God of War Timeline Part 4, The Fall of Olympus, where all the abuse and tragedies forced upon Kratos by the Olympians reaches a boiling point, and the Spartan God of War finally explodes, with a fury that has never been witnessed by gods or mortals. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a like and a comment down below letting me know. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on social media. You can also check out some of my other videos, or click my Patreon link if you'd like to support GamerThumb TV. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.